The Canon R6 Mark II. Is it good for video or should you spend your money on another camera like the R5, the R8 or maybe even the Sony a7 IV? I've just shot my first wedding video with this camera and the specs are absolutely amazing which we will get into in a minute but how actually is it in the real world? Does it overheat? How's the battery life? And just how was the user experience overall? First, let's go over the specs to see if you think this camera is right for you. So the image quality of this camera is amazing. It's a full frame sensor and you can actually shoot 4K, which is completely all down sampled from 6K. So you're getting a higher quality 4K in 4K 50, 4K 25. And this is just always embedded into the camera every time you shoot. You don't have to turn this setting on. It's always down sampled from 6K. So you'll always get them super sharp shots. One of my favorite features about this camera and is what I use for the entire wedding day. And that is 4K 50 frames per second. And it's got no crop whatsoever. You're getting a full full frame readout. And that is one thing that I absolutely love about this camera. And not only just 4K50 with no crop, you also get C log free, which means it's better dynamic range. You also get 10 bit 422 footage to play around with in post. And all of this in 4K50p is just the icing on the cake for me and is why I absolutely love this camera so much. However, though, if you want to shoot super slow mo up to 150 frames per second, you will have to drop down to 1080p. There is no 4K super slow mo 150 frames per second or even 100 frames per second in the Canon R6 Mark II. That feature is actually saved for the Canon R5 and R5C. So if you do want 4K 100 and you need it, then I recommend you go for the Canon R5 at least or the Canon R5C because this camera doesn't have it. You still get a really nice clean image, but it's just not as good as 4K. You can't crop in to maintain that detail and it just doesn't look as sharp or crisp. I don't actually use it that much anyway. Who knows if I did have 4K 100, would I use it more? But the file sizes would be absolutely massive. So I don't know, I love my 4K 50. I use that pretty much all of the time anyway. Also, if you have a Ninja Atmos V, you can actually shoot in pure 6K raw video up to 50 frames per second. Now that is insane because a lot of people out there have Ninja Vs and all you have to do is connect it via HDMI and you can externally record to the Ninja Atmos and you can actually shoot 6K raw video. Like this is in raw video is mental. Like you get so much dynamic range, it's unbelievable. That feature, if you're interested in this camera, is an absolute joy to have if you do have a Ninja V. Another great thing about the video in this camera, I didn't actually use it on the day, but it does have false color. And you can just use false color to just check obviously your exposure. So that's great considering it's not a cinema camera. However, one feature I'd absolutely love to have would be waveforms. I would absolutely love that because I use it on the R5C at work and it's just an absolute game changer for me. So if I do want to use waveforms, I will have to use monitor, but at the end of the day, histograms and false color is more than enough if you know what you're doing. However, now let's talk about some of the downsides of this camera. We already spoke about you can't get 4K 100, but I don't think that's the biggest downside in the world. But I think some of these specs might actually make you want to double think getting this camera and maybe go for something else. And the first feature is that it can only shoot in IPB or IPB compressed. IPB is still absolutely fine and your videos actually get compressed way more than IPB compression anyway when you do post on social media. The file sizes are way smaller in IPB compared to all eye. But if you do want all eye and you really want all of that maximum information in your camera, then I do suggest going up to the R5 because the R5 can shoot all eye and also the R5C can actually shoot different loads of different codecs as well because that is an actual cinema camera. If you want all eye, then the Canon R6 Mark II might not be for you. Now, another thing which I think is quite a major flaw and it's this is a hard one really because they do save it for their cinema cameras because the R5 and even the R5C don't have it. So I can't really knock this camera that much for not having this feature, especially because a camera that's nearly double in price in the R5C does not have it. And that is C-Log2. This camera, like I said earlier, can shoot in C-Log3, which is a big plus for me. Like I said, it's better than C-Log and you can get some really nice dynamic range. However, C-Log3 does have a lot of noise in the shadows. and I do see myself having to overexpose a little bit. And during the wedding, I did have to overexpose by one or two stops. Now, this isn't the biggest deal in the world because C-Log3 can recover highlights quite well and it is really good at doing that. But the shadow performance isn't the best in C-Log3 and I've noticed that. The actual subject looks perfect and amazing and that's the, really the main thing. But if you actually look in the corners and in the dark areas, there is quite a lot of noise. And especially in these YouTube videos, you can probably see it in this corner now, there is a lot of noise in the shadows and that's just C-Log3 in general. But they save C-Log2 for their main cinema cameras like the C70 and the C300 Mark III. I hope to God that they do bring C-Log2 into their other cameras because Sony have S-Log3, their best 
picture profile in a lot of their other cameras. Even the Sony a7 IV, which is around the same price as the Canon R6 Mark II, has S-Log3, which is their best picture profile. But please, Canon, can you put C-Log2 into your Canon cameras, mirrorless cameras, like the R6 Mark III in the future? Or if the R5 Mark II has C-Log2, then that's an absolute game changer for that camera. And I would say it might actually be a must have. All of this, especially this video features packed in a 2,800 brand new body. And you can actually find it in a lot cheaper places, like up to a thousand pounds cheaper. So about £1,800 for this camera is an absolute steal in my opinion, especially for these specs. So that's just a little rundown on the specs. Now let's get into my actual real world experience with the Canon R6 Mark II when I shot the wedding last month. Overall, it was an absolute joy to use. I mainly used it on the gimbal and I mainly used my Canon RF 35mm f1.8. This was the lens I pretty much used, I would say about 95% of the time with this wedding video. And that is mainly because I do not trust my Canon EOS R. Like I said, my Canon EOS R can't shoot 4K complete full frame, it has a 1.8 times crop. So when I was on my gimbal with my 35 mil, it was hard to change lenses to my 7200 over there, even though I really wanted to use that so much because I love that lens and it is my favorite lens. However, I wanted to go safe and I wanted to get the 35 mils on the gimbal. However, when I did have time, I did switch it up and change lenses to my 7200 and the 7200 shots just look amazing. 4K 50p, C-Log3, 10-bit 422. This camera is absolutely amazing, especially in the daylight. Like I said, with the C-Log3 shadow performance isn't the best inside. When you're outside, all of that goes and the image and picture quality just looks absolutely out of this world. I'm so happy with how this wedding video actually came out and I can't wait to shoot more of this camera because it was an absolute amazing joy to use. The battery life was absolutely amazing. I pretty much shot the whole day. I did turn it on and off now and again and I didn't even get past two batteries. The first battery pretty much lasted the whole of the morning and a little bit after the ceremony. I think it was the speeches actually. It lasted from the morning all the way to the end of the speeches. Now I was actually a little bit lucky because the battery light was flashing right at the end. I didn't actually look at that. After that, I didn't even get through the second battery. So the battery life on this is unbelievable. 4K50, C-Log3, 10-bit 422, pretty much on for the majority of the day. The good thing with it, when you're not using it, it does go into like sleep rest mode to save some battery life, which I do like. Compare that to the Canon R5C, which we use at work, is ridiculous because the Canon R5C in 4K 50p, you don't even get about an hour's worth of footage. And that's with it just being on, not just recorded, and that's just the camera being on. And the fact that I've gone all day on just two batteries on this camera really does show how good the battery life in the R6 Mark II is. And if you're on the fence between the R6 Mark II and the Canon R8, what I would think, the Canon R8 is apparently really close to the R5C with battery life. Apparently it can't even last like an hour in 4K 50p because it's the exact same sensor and specs as this camera. And it's got the small RP batteries. It's not, they've got the LP E6 batteries. It's the smaller ones. And that can't even last an hour. So think of how many batteries you have to use on that. And that's one reason why I'm so happy I went with the R6 Mark II over the Canon R8 back in March. Now another point is during this day, considering I am in England and it was quite cold at the end of October, this camera didn't even come close to overheating at all. 4K 50, pretty much on for a lot of the time. And at one point I was recording for like 20 odd minutes constantly, not even close to overheating at all. Remember I am in England and it was cold. It wasn't the hottest day. So if you are in like America or something, you're in the blazing hot sun, it might come a little bit close to overheating, but I don't actually think the R6 II is that bad at overheating in general anyway. So I don't think you'll have that much of an issue with it. Like I said earlier, with the downsampled 6K to 4K footage, it just looked absolutely tremendous. I'm so chuffed of how this actually came out. I'm so happy with this video and the footage just looks super sharp and super unreal. The autofocus worked like a gem. I just can't believe how good the autofocus is. I just put it in eye track pretty much the whole day. And yeah, it just locks straight onto the eye and doesn't really come off at all. And it's just so good, the autofocus. I don't even have to think about it. It's just that good. The autofocus and image quality was also absolutely fantastic when it was the party time. So when it was really low light and it was quite dark in there, when it was the first dance and everyone was just dancing and having a great time, it was really dark. And I really did have to crank up my ISO to like 3,000, maybe even like 4,000 ISO, I think it was, at one over 100, because I was shooting uh, 50 frames per second. And I also was at 1.8 aperture on my RF 35 millimeter. 
and it was still really dark and really grainy. However, the reason why it was so good and the autofocus worked so good was because I used my Aperture MC. This was an absolute lifesaver for me. I set it on top of my camera using a little hot shoe mount, screwed it on, put it on 5600 Kelvin, turned it on 100% and it lit them up perfectly. And I'm honestly so shocked how this footage actually came out. I'm so happy I brought that light because without it, I honestly think it would have been pretty unusable, the footage. I would have obviously used it, but at the end of the day, that's not just for the R6 Mark II. Any camera out there, the C70, a RED camera, any of them cameras would have been really bad in that situation. It would have been really noisy. It doesn't matter what camera you have, you still need great lighting. And even that Aperture MC, it's only five watts, that did the job for me, and I'm so glad I brought it. So. During the night scenes, that was my favorite time. Once I put that light on, I was having a great time. I was getting in there, I was using the gimbal, or was you going handheld? I was trying to get some nice handheld movements and I was just having a great time. And I honestly think this is my favorite part of the whole video. It's just so much fun seeing people so happy, seeing people dancing. But the R6 Mark II and C-Log 3 and the 10-bit color really does come in handy. And this just looks absolutely stunning and I'm so happy with how this came out. And another thing that I love about it is the dual card slots. And this is one of the reasons why I didn't like my Canon EOS R when I filmed a wedding a couple years ago. It's only got one card slot. So if I drop that card, it breaks, it corrupts or anything, that whole wedding is gone. So if you want two card slots, remember this camera has two card slots. So you can record to both cards at once just to ease your mind a little bit. And another thing that I love about this camera is I didn't actually use it on a day. Like I said, I actually did get close to 25 minutes or maybe even over 30 minutes, but there's no record limit on this camera. The R5 has a record limit and it still does. The EOS R has a record limit. So when I was in the ceremony and also the speeches, I had to really make sure this didn't go past 30 minutes because I would have lost the audio. I did actually press the record button on the DJI mic to get a backup recording, but there's no problem with that with the R6 Mark II. There's no record limit at all. Well, I actually think it's like six hours or something stupid, which someone will never really get to ever so that doesn't bother me at all so at least there's no half an hour record limit here's some extra features as well that i didn't use but you may like for video and one of them is pre-recording you can actually shoot up to five seconds i think or three seconds before you press the shutter button so if you're watching something and you think you've missed it well, if you press the record button, it's recording up to five seconds before, so maybe you haven't missed it. Also, there's three custom modes on this. So on the top dial, you get custom mode one, two, and three. The first custom mode I've set to 4K, 25, IPB, one over 50 of a shutter. I've got like the lowest aperture, F4, F1.8, whatever the lens I'm using, and ISO 800, because the native ISO for C-Log 3 is 800, so just remember that. Custom mode two, I've got to 4K, 50, and then custom mode three, this is where I've got 1080p, 150 frames per second. So I think that's pretty much everything about this camera like just overall on the day it was a joy to use like i said it was amazing i'm so happy with how this wedding came out i absolutely love this camera so much and it's not just great for video it's also an unbelievable photography camera this might be the best hybrid camera on the market at the minute and if you want to actually see how good this camera is at photos especially during a wedding and you may want to watch this video next to see what the photography is like at weddings because i'll give you a little spoiler it's absolutely amazing.